This is an example of endovascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia. Alternative names for the lesion include intravascular angiomatosis, vegetant intravascular hemangioendothelioma, and this was the original term that Masson gave it when he described it in hemorrhoidal tissue. Other names include Masson tumor, Masson's hemangioma, and Masson's lesion. When Masson first described it, he thought it was a tumour, but it is in fact a reactive condition and a form of organising thrombus. These lesions may arise de novo in the pure form, where they occur in a dilated vein, usually in the finger or a vein in the head and neck, but they may also arise in pre-existing lesions, such as hemangiomas, especially cavernous hemangiomas, hemorrhoids, varices, urethral caruncles, and pyogenic granulomas. Sometimes, however, they may be extravascular, arising in a hematoma. Histologically, they are composed of papillae of hypocellular hyaline collagen, lined by endothelial cells, and thrombus may be present, showing potentially a continuum of changes from thrombus through to organising thrombus through to papillary endothelial hyperplasia. The main differential diagnosis is angiosarcoma, but these lesions show no atypia, do not have bizarre cells, and there's no necrosis. This is an example of endovascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia that has arisen within a cavernous hemangioma. And hyaline papillary structures can be seen within the cavernous spaces. And at high power you can see the papillary structures composed of acellular hyaline collagen covered by a layer of endothelial cells. In this picture you can see papillary endothelial hyperplasia arising from a thrombus. So on the left side of the picture is thrombus and as we pan along the thrombus is gradually organising until finally it forms these nice papillary Highline structures covered by endothelium. And this confirms the reactive nature of the process and that the lesion is benign.